Diego. I'm the ex colleague managing director. It's a really a pleasure to be here today together with my colleagues, Giuseppe Innamorato, the product CTO, and Giuseppe Carrere there, which is the ex colleague product manager. I'd just like to spend a few words about who we are for people who don't know about us. Um, we've been working on Asterisk since uh, 2004, more or less. And uh, our flagship product, it's, uh, it's called Xcoli. It's a call center solution based on Asterisk. The um, Xcoli shuttle is the version quite well used all around the world now. It's a solution providing contact center um, applications, both for supervisors and agents. So real-time dashboard, multi-skill based routing, uh, advanced reporting, drag and drop IVR, and so on and so forth. Much focus on the voice channel. In uh, 2016, we came up with Xcall Emotion, which is uh, the omni-channel version of the product. So it provides to the call center also other channels like SMS, fax, web chat, email, and uh, where we come up also with a concept of, of an open channel, which uh, provides you the possibility to add your own custom channel. Few features, so, so the solution is used uh, more or less all over the world. We have quite a lot of agents using the solution and supervisor, and it's totally multi-language. This is our team. I really like to thank all of them for the hard job they are doing, and also for what we are doing together after, after the work. So this was a few months ago. Uh, we, we made a product launch. Uh, actually, we, launch. Yeah, actually, we launched ourselves. So we rented a, what was a kind of a, um, human sling, actually. And a flat human sling, and the experience, well, was pretty nice. The younger Giuseppe can explain a little bit more about it. So almost 4G speed acceler acceleration. And uh, yeah, it was a kind of a launch. <laughs> and uh, I just have a question. So uh, how many of you have ever used Asterisk in a call center environment? So almost everyone. This is really what we are trying to talk about today. We will uh, run through a couple of uh, call center applications in, uh, let me say, critical situations, okay? Not, not very standard situations. This is one of the prominent uh, uh, marketing research you can find on the web. There are many, but it tends to be that uh, um, the call center manager's needs uh, in particular this year, are first of all, having some multi-channel capabilities. Second, be able to work with teleworkers, remote virtual agents, and third, the video as a very important channel as well, and then other interesting video. We will focus our presentation today about a couple of applications involving the first three points you see here. First of all, virtual agents. Well, let's imagine uh, Alicia, she is a call center agent. She is used to work from home, sometimes from the call center sites, maybe even from multiple call center sites. This is a situation uh, which can happen, and it will happen a lot in the future. As an agent, uh, she needs something more than a simple, let me say, SIP client application to work. In particular, she needs to be able to control the login, logout, and generally speaking, the status, also the pause mode, over multiple queues, because she is, of course, multi-skill, so she can belongs to multiple call center queues. Call disposal, the possibility to provide a proactive uh, support to the customer, so be able to integrate the SIP client application with an external CRM ticketing system or something like that. Call advanced features, so warm transfer, three-way conference, and so on and so forth. Pop-up notification, 
call recording, and also on the other side, the, the supervisors need to be able to monitor the call center situation. Also in this case, so understanding what Alicia is doing, um, help Alicia with training using maybe asterisk transpire and so on and so forth. So we built a kind of a Android application prototype. It's still a prototype. Um, it's, uh, the, 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 the idea here is to provide something very simple to be used by the agent. So the agent don't need to spend time to do complex configuration of a SIP client or something like that. Alicia just need to be able to configure the first time with a user and password and the domain or IP address of the asterisk machine, and she needs to be done. On the other side, the supervisor needs a very clean and powerful dashboard application to control and to monitor the status of the agents. About the architecture, so we are using asterisk 13, real time based, so most part of the configuration is inside the asterisk data, uh, the, the MySQL database in, in this case. And we added some RESTful web interface, uh, web, web service, sorry, uh, on, on top of the asterisk machine. That way, the Android application on the right side, you see, uh, is going to easily connect to the asterisk machine. So first of all, the application send some user uh, credentials and get a token. And then this token will be used by all the other next uh, available calls. So the next request will send a token, uh, the application will get the SIP parameters to connect the SIP client, and then another request to, uh, to add Alicia inside the multiple queues she belongs to. Okay, I think it's now time I'm a little bit scared, but uh, it's now time of a little demo. So we have here this. Okay. Which is my Android, actually. Yeah, it's a Nexus. I didn't test with many other ones, but... So this is the application. It's very simple. Alicia just need to, to set a few things inside and tap on login, and she will be logged inside the queues. Well, we can see here, let's log out again, and let's have a look at the asterisk console interface. So I've created here a queue, it's called teleworkers, this queue, and there are no members now inside the queue. So when I tap on login, okay, you see that uh, my agent is called Diego Gosmar in this case. And uh, the demo effect. Okay, so Diego Gosmar is now registered. And uh, let's see if I'm able to, to make a call. Let's restart this a little bit now. So the demo effect is starting to, to perform. Yeah, but it should, it should log in inside the queue. Let's see if it works like this. Yeah.
Okay, now I'm in the queue. I should be able to do that with a single tap, but the demo worked perfectly. Okay, so I'm now able to receive an incoming call, okay? And uh, okay, I'm able to manage the call, but uh, that's very simple, that's not enough. I mean, we need, uh, we would like to do something more. So, uh, Alicia would like also to connect to an external CRM right now. And uh, she needs to, um, to manage proactively the, the customer requests. So we are using a, a CRM, a simple CRM we have built, but in principle using some API, you can do that with any kind of, of external CRM. So let's, uh, let's see what's, what's going on if we are able to make it working now. Okay, I can answer the call. And I should see something like a pop-up or something like that. I don't know. We can, we can try to reboot the server. It could be a, a nice thing. So also Keynote would like to update now. Okay, let's see if the service is up again. Actually, the machine is not here local, it's on the web. So I hope that the network can help us. So let's try this. And this as well. Okay. Let's now, now try the call. Oh, sorry, I also need probably to, to do something like this. I want to simulate a call now. No, no way. Probably something on my mobile network here. Well, no way. Yeah, but I mean. Lo lo già aggiunto la cosa. Ah, okay. Let's try this. Okay. So those was what I was supposed to, to show you. 
Okay, so the call is incoming inside the Alicia mobile application and a new contact or an available contact here is available. So this is the CRM and Alicia can see actually uh, the details about the customer who is calling Alicia now. Based on the caller number, I can retrieve the customer information. I can also dispose the call. That means that I can tag maybe this call. This is a VIP customer, advanced customer, or whatever you want. And I can proactively engage a conversation with the customer. Okay. So it's not so, it's not that easy as it seems to be actually. Uh, we face a lot of issues often with a bad internet connection, um, secure, securing and uh, the security, generally speaking, is often a challenge in this case because the remote agent typically works under um, dynamic IP address, so no static IP address, uh, we would need to consider an SBC or something or some good firewall in, in front of the asterisk machine. Also, the supervisor training is more challenging because they are remotely. And uh, the CTI pop up, uh, what you have seen here, is also a bit challenge because Alicia needs to go from one interface to the other interface in this case. So, if still support me now. Okay, I need to answer, no, I want to show you the, the telephone. Okay. So I need to answer the call, and then in this case I need to find a way to get back to the CRM, and in this case I can measure the contact proactively in the CRM. So we, we, we would like to integrate that inside the application as well. What next we have in our mind? Um, we would like to go omnichannel with the application. So besides voice, we would like to add web chat, email, and all the other channels we have. So uh, for the agent being able to receive notifications on multiple channels, including the open channels I, I mentioned before. Omnichannel is quite a challenge because uh, the agents need to manage multiple kinds of interactions, so the compl level of complexity increases a lot. Also on the supervisor side, they need something to monitor the agents, which needs to be multi-channel. And uh, we developed something uh, like this, so uh, a real-time dashboard which is, uh, in this case, there is the voice, but I can show you which is here. Okay, apart from the voice, we have the email, chat, fax, and all the other channel, and we need to get aware about the situation of the agent. Um, one concept of the omni-channel we are working on is the capacity, because there are agents very, very good to work maybe with real-time real channels, like voice, video may be less good to work with, with messaging channels, like web chat or other uh, email channels and so on, or vice versa. In that case, we can work on different priorities and concurrent interactions possibility for different agents in different channels as well. This is an example of the omni-channel dashboard for, uh, for, the, for, for the supervisor in this case. So, talking about WebRTC, uh, the video is one of the other important uh, uh, channels we have in mind. It's my pleasure now to hand over to Giuseppe for such short demonstration. Okay, thank you, Diego. Uh, my name is Giuseppe Namorato. I'm a partner of his senior lab, Scolli. And I'm going to present a POC that we developed uh, around WebRTC technology. <clears throat> We already did a presentation last year about uh, WebRTC uh, with the Respoke technology. Last year we presented a visual IVR, so-called, that was able to send 
uh, data and voice uh, throughout the web RTC channel. This year, we are going further and we are trying to show you uh, what uh, can be done for uh, uh, improve the user experience uh, uh, both on the agent side and the, in the customer side, showing uh, how to work with the chat and the video escalation procedure. What we did was to develop a, a logic and application uh, that reflect this kind of architecture. It's uh, the simplest architecture we can deliver uh, with Web RTC, and uh, is a Web RTC client directly connected to Asterisk and uh, with the agent uh, on, the, on, on back. Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, this kind of architecture is quite uh, simple to deploy. Uh, we can use uh, the native VP8 uh, codec, video codec, and we can use and leverage the queue system of Asterisk to uh, deliver the chat and the video uh, as a, a queue subsystem. That means uh, that the first uh, available agent uh, will answer to the customer and stuff like that. For sure, this very simple architecture has some uh, issue about uh, uh, security and uh, that will be address, uh, addressed with uh, uh, some stuff that we will speak uh, later on. Now, it's time to see not a dangerous demo, maybe I would prefer to call uh, a dangerous video, <laughs> it's less... <laughs> damage for the moment, and uh, this is uh, what uh, the user experience uh, is uh, with this kind of uh, architecture. This represents, oh, there is no room for the chat, is there? No, I can manage that. No, okay, okay, it's coming. Well, this is an example where a customer came on a website of a company and asking for help using a chat channel. This chat was routed to an agent on the, on the queue system of Asterisk and quickly uh, the user and the agent discovered that it's not enough to chat in order to solve the issue. Then the agent remotely enabled uh, the video button on the chat system and the agent and uh, the user can be connected throughout video. And then they can have a more interesting user experience and uh, it's possible in this way to understand and solve uh, the issue. In this video, what we see is that uh, the software developer reflects the architecture that we, we showed before, and uh, everything is uh, perfectly working. The agent is saying that, uh, okay, he recognizes the products, these are the right products, they can uh, uh, send, the customer can send the product to repair, and uh, the ticket was closed uh, successfully. What we used in order to achieve this kind of uh, uh, proof of concept, we use on the agent side, on the asterisk side, a video phone that is link phone uh, that is uh, VP8 enabled. We used the asterisk 13 with messaging and video enabled and a browser with a good support of WebRTC, like Chrome or uh, uh, Mozilla. Then we developed a piece of logic inside our solution, motion solution, and we enabled an escalation procedure to allow the agent to enable the video on the customer, uh, on the customer web page.
What we have to do next in order to uh, make more robust this, uh, uh, this architecture? We have to put a sort of SIP proxy in the middle in order to improve security and uh, uh, to make it more safe. This is the first thing that we, will, we are going to do. The second thing will be to introduce a media coder, a gateway, a WebRTC gateway, like Dubango, for example. In this way, we will be able not only to add the security to the solution, but also to use different codec, different video codec, for example, the H264, and using this kind of video codec, you will have more choice in terms of telephone, or you can use our uh, phone bar that is already enabled for uh, this kind of codec. So, now to wrap up, I will hand over again to Diego. Yeah, what, what we have seen today uh, was a couple of call center applications. The first of all was uh, related to uh, omni-channel capability for mobile applications, especially useful for virtual agents, remote teleworkers, and so on and so forth. We, we've seen that uh, it's tough, actually, and uh, in particular is uh, uh, it's difficult to provide something very simple, both on the supervisor side and the agents in a quite complex situation. Secondly, what Giuseppe showed you just right now, the video channel using WebRTC. And uh, in this case, well, we are in a situation where we try to do something to keep very simple to be used in even a, most complex, in even a more complex situation like that. That brings us uh, to the end of our presentation. I'd like to thank you very much for your attention and any questions, uh, James, uh, you have, we are here for you. Right, well, Diego, Giuseppe, thank you for that. And I am incredibly Im impressed with your bravery uh, going in and launching directly into dangerous demo, which did prove to be quite dangerous. Yeah, definitely. yeah. <laughs> and uh, but you did well. You kept going, and uh, you re rebooted your, your Astros box. Finally, and, yes. <laughs> and you got there in the end. So that you are to be applauded for that. But I've got a question, really, for you, for you, Giuseppe. I, I love your 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 demonstration of your video client, and you talked about uh, the video codecs that you were using, but you didn't say anything about what you're doing for audio. So I'm guessing, because you did this work some time ago, you were using uh, G711 for the audio. Oh, yeah. You, OK, for audio, you can use Opus. It's working very well. Well, well yeah, until about last week, you, uh, you were only able to, to work with G711 with, uh, with Asterisk. Were, were yeah, 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 as well, yeah. yes. So having Opus available now just really opens up possibilities, makes life a lot easier for you, or better, I think. Uh, sorry, I didn't catch. Um, now that you've got Opus available to you yeah. with your Asterisk platform, yeah. uh, life is much better, I uh, Absolutely, think. yes. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. Uh, performance with G711 in a, in a, yeah, in a, a lossy environment of, yeah, is... Yeah, you need a lot of bandwidth, but uh, we, yeah, we, we tested Opus and it's working very well. Yeah. At, at, the, at this stage, at this, at this level. Yeah. So we will see when uh, we will increase in production and we will uh, deploy in a large environment what will happen, but we are really confident. Yes, yeah, indeed. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to realize how important um, getting Opus into Asterisk is for, for applications like this. Yeah. Uh, so it's a really big step forward. And we had to work very, very hard yeah. against yeah. the Digium lawyers to get them to, uh, to put it in. But we got there in the end. So. Yeah. Right, um, that was uh, a pretty good uh, presentation. I don't want to hog the time all the time. Have you got any questions for Giuseppe and uh, and crew? Come on, there must be a, the odd question or two. Is there life in the audience? <laughs> well, have you got a comment? Do you want to re review what you've seen? Oh, right, okay. So, um, 
So, uh, and I apologize because I was late to the party, but um, so I gather Opus is the, Digium has put this as the new codec and it's much more streamlined and efficient. Okay. Um, will you guys roll this out in uh, motion uh, as soon as it's available? That was for you. Well, motion is based on Asterix 13, so why not? I mean. Well, I don't know. I didn't know if you were going to yeah, lock yeah. it down to a certain version or where you're going to, would you add that codec in as it came available? It will be, I mean, it's uh, available on Asterisk now, and motion use Asterix 13. So, in principle, it will be available. The challenge is to move from a demo to a real product in that case. And uh, yeah, the scalability, for example, it's very important. So, the, the codec is very important. It's, it's really important it's now available. Yeah, absolutely. We've been waiting for it for a uh, long time, especially if you want to scale, because, I mean, once it's to do a couple of calls, once it's, it's to do hundreds and thousands of calls. In, indeed. Uh, let's very quickly just talk, we've got a couple of minutes, but uh, talk about how, it, how uh, the differences between G711 and, and Opus, and, and why it's, it's such a, a great step forward. Um, G711 has been with us for forever, hasn't it? And we're talking, yes. that's a, an eight kilohertz narrow band um, codec, uh, which natively consumes about 64 kilobit per second. Add your packet overheads on top of that, so each channel consumes around 80 kilobit per, uh, bit per second, um, which is quite heavy. Um, compare that with Opus, uh, one running wideband, so 16 kilohertz wideband codec is going to consume of the order of what 28 kilobit per second, uh, with packet overhead stakes up to 32. So you're less than half the bandwidth. Um, so that's a huge saving already. But then you look at how they operate in errored environments. So your standard G711 codec is going to crack up at around a quarter of a percent packet loss. Quarter to half percent, it starts to completely lose it. Uh, Opus, on the other hand, uh, we were demonstrating here at uh, Astricon last year. Astricon? I think it was. Um, operating Opus at 40%, 40% packet loss. And it was still perfectly fine. So what we're saying is that we, uh, we end up with a really robust audio channel, which isn't gonna, gonna crack up. And so you can get away with operating Opus over really crappy um, LTE. Your one. No problem with satellite is you've got lots of latency and, and that's just bad. But but no, you can operate it over uh, lossy Wi-Fi or mobile um, LTE. I mean three three uh, G links where you're dropping packets left, right, and centre, and and the audio is still fine. So Opus is brilliant. We love Opus. Uh, it's it's a huge huge step forward. Anyway, so I'm stealing your thunder, but it's, it's worth emphasizing how good Opus is. Yeah, you can tell I'm a member of the Opus fan club. Yes, I definitely. It's, it's important, it's adaptative, as you, as you explain it now. So it can adapt to different conditions. That's also good for applications, something like this. Yeah, it's also probably worth mentioning that Opus comes in a number of different flavors. Um, the full Opus is fully adaptive multi-rate. Yeah. So, um, it changes the um, error, well, the coding system, depending on the, uh, uh, how good the, the, the data, uh, the, the transmission channel is. Um, and, but the implementation of Opus that we're getting in, in, with Asterisk is currently fixed rate, so it doesn't do the fully, full, full adaptive piece. But even so, it's still pretty, pretty damn good. So what else can we say about this? I think you're very bold, actually, running a, an entire uh, no, call uh, center client. It's funny client because in, it's working perfectly now. In, <laughs> well, it is now. Demo gods, hey? But actually running the client on a mobile device, which uh, I think is a very bold move because you've only got very limited amounts of uh, real estate, yeah. screen real estate on a mobile device. And so running the, uh, the client with the... Um, the underlying... Um, yeah, there is the underlying uh, SIP stack inside yeah, as well. Yeah, it's... It can crash, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm impressed. <laughs> I mean, you're very brave. I wouldn't do that, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting, uh, interesting model. Yeah. 
Okay. And I, I haven't seen anybody be as brave as that before. So you are to be applauded. Okay. So any other? Come on. We must have a question or a comment or something. No? Who, uh, whose watch was that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Diego's watch. Yeah, yeah nice watch. watch. <laughs> Again, it's the Italian he style. He made some advertising. Huh? So, any, anyway, how are we doing for time? We're, well, we're, we've, we're seven minutes early, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, well, can we start by thanking uh, Giuseppe and uh, Diego for a really uh, interesting and penetrating presentation? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.